Ale... Good to go. Yeah. Okay. That's on. Yeah, we're live. Live. Um, hello. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here and those who are live. Um, I don't know how many you are. Um, but okay, there's my mum, so there's one. Hello, Sophie. Um, so, um, this is the self published PFE um, temporary space at the Photographer's Gallery. We're on the third floor at the Photographer's Gallery in London. Um, the photographers gallery invited uh, Sir Babish Biafi to take over a floor for a week. We started last Friday and we ended um, this Friday, which is today. Um, in two days, we're finishing, not today. Um, we've been uh, hosting different activities from um, workshops to informal conversations. Um, this is one of them. Uh, from a library events here, and a thousand of them. Anybody is interested in seeing them. And uh, um, as I said, during the week we invited different um, artists to come and talk about their work, publishing, books, and all sorts of different things. So we had a new creator from Peter Puklos, um, and in the second day we had. Holly. Oh. <laughs> second day we had. Uh, on Monday. We on Monday. Had, um, ah, Melinda Gibson and. Um, Leah McGee, sorry, I have no talk. Uh, it's, it's been a long week. Um, so if you're interested to see those talks, um, and maybe I should see them as well uh, again, um, uh, you can do it on the um, Photographer's Gallery YouTube page. I think I've covered all the ground uh, of information. And so today is a slightly different conversation, um, just because it's not based around book, but um, it's based around the self. Cells. We don't know. Um, Juno Calypso is uh, here to talk about uh, practice, and uh, there was different reasons why uh, I've been intrigued about your work uh, since you were a student at LCC, which yeah. is not long ago, a couple of years ago, three years ago. Um, and um, we commissioned you to make a video, which we uh, will be talking about um, later on. Um, and. Um, I just thought it could be quite interesting to have a chat about it. Because it's quite an informal space and an informal um, setup, uh, what I recommend is that I'm going to ask some questions and then we open to the floor for your comments and questions, etc. etc. So, maybe the, an interesting way possibly to start is from a series of photographs that you brought with you, yeah. um, which are uh, selfies from when you were, where is this from? Um, I think eighth, yeah. And, do you want to talk about them? Yeah, go yeah. <laughs> So I found, since I started this project, everyone always asks why you take pictures of yourself or why are you trying to be semi shaman And so my way of backing that up was going through all my hard drives and all my actual photographs from my childhood and finding all the pictures I've taken of myself before. And so I put them all together, and this is the earliest one I could find where I was, yeah, seven or eight, taking a picture and while I was film, little instant film cameras in my house. And there she is. And then this was when I got a Game Boy camera when I was eight as well. What is a Game Boy? I know. It didn't really last that long. It was like a webcam that you slotted into the Game Boy and twisted it around. So it was like the first selfie thing, because you could twist it on yourself and take lots of pictures and put stickers on it. And it had a printer, so you print them out. It was really, it was really like advanced, but the picture quality was really bad. So, but, what is this? Your scrapbook or diary? <laughs> yeah, this is my first photo book, actually. Oh, right. Yeah, and I put them all together. And, and the only one so far. Exactly. Yeah. This is it. Can I have an award for this one, please? So yeah, this is my first little book, and yeah, it was like me, me, me. Yeah. <laughs> And then when, yeah, then I got a digital camera and I also discovered like hair dye and like being cool. This was in 2005, for several nights. I was, well, not, actually no, this was 2003, I was 13. And I put the camera on a little <coughs> thing, like on the side and just did like movie pictures. This is before MySpace as well, so this is like pre-everything. So how, how was this uh, uh, photograph circulate? 
they did at all? Were they just meant to be for your consumption? MSN. That was the way. So, <laughs> that was the only social media you had. And so yeah, that would be my profile picture. Or I said it to other people. Or I can't remember. I remember other people, a lot of people seeing it and being like, that doesn't look like you. I felt kind of I, I know. I mean, we're not here to look. I know, but yeah. But do, you, do you feel that you were, why were you photographing yourself? I mean, were you, yeah. because a lot of times people think about taking pictures of themselves to consumption of others, yeah, yeah, rather yeah. their own consumption. Do you feel, yeah. I, know, I mean, this is a slightly different exercise because you went back to kind of figure out why you're doing mm -hmm. what you're doing today, mm -hmm. but can, can you go back to that frame yeah. of mind at that time? What was the, and I'm not mm -hmm. talking about, but that, that, was the difference. Yeah. That, that's, that was like purely innocent, being a kid, having fun, doing this with your hair, like whatever. And then it definitely was a skip in the mental state with the other one where it's like, you are at school, you're at secondary school, there's boys, and you're just like, what do I look like? Am I attractive? Am I cool? Like, what am I? Can I take a picture of myself looking the way I want to look? And so mm -hmm. can I control my looks? Because every day you're going to school, just looking weird every day. It's like, is there somewhere I can find out what I look like to other people. So what's the, the version of self that we see here? Is the version of self that you think is crafted by a set of expectations that people have? Mm -hmm. You know, your, um, I don't know, the, your girlfriends or yeah. your boyfriend. Do you see, was it morphing yourself into somebody for the others? Or was it a self-determination, I'm like this? Did, did, did you yeah, see it? I because think it's both, yeah. And I don't know, I'm trying to think what I was thinking. I think you're mainly bored as well. Like, this is before the internet was really fun. And so when you're alone, your phone is like a Nokia that can do nothing. And so when you're alone, there was nothing else to do apart from like, listening to music or if you had a camera, take some pictures. And so that was just naturally a thing that I ended up doing because mm -hmm. there's nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. so, but yeah, and also trying to like make a solid version of myself that was like, that's me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we, because there is, I mean, we're going to go, Discuss this in relation to your photograph. I just had a kind of, um, thought. Um, I, I think I'm not disclosing anything, but you just showed me pictures of a print uh, that you just made, and it's one of the photographs that we'll see. In, I don't think we'll see in a second, but it's we a could, photograph. Yeah. We could. It's in the, video, the video is kind of like the moving version. Of that. So the, the video that some of you have seen that we were playing mm -hmm. in my back, um, where you went to this hotel. I mean, we're spending a second, but I was just thinking when I saw that photograph, and especially the size of it, which is basically yeah. the size of this table. Yeah. Um, and you are naked in it, and you're reflected green, green <laughs> and reflected many times. I'm just wondering, and you said, I'm not going to say who bought it, but yeah, somebody yeah. with a lot of money and a lot of um, restaurants. Yes, yeah. it's going to be in the restaurant. <laughs> it's going to be yeah. in the restaurant. Yes. Uh, I was like, are you sure you want this one? People might be hungry. <laughs> like, but yeah. Uh, because I was thinking, um, in, in relation to the depiction of the cell and the consumption by others. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to imagine this man has bought this print yeah. and it is very big, but I mean, clearly it isn't quite as what I was kind of thinking yeah. about. Yeah. Well, we were yeah, thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, you put it in his home, it's for his own consumption mm -hmm. or you know, mm -hmm. his family, family I don't know. Yeah. And there's kind of this interesting, I was trying to work out what, how you felt about it. If you were, you know, this is a print, it's an object that's very detached from. Mm -hmm. It's gone, that image is gone, it's in the hands of others. Yeah. Um, or do you have any kind of feeling? Feel about people yeah, it's around. the same thing when I was looking at this picture when you were kind of crafting yourself to be shared on um, yeah. MSN yeah. Or, or you yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah. MySpace. Yeah. I think I feel more embarrassed sitting here with these behind me than the green one. Because the green one is like I obviously crafted it to look good, it's like it's art, it feels like technically good and so I've got that to fall back on but this is just like you know what is this? what is exactly what is this this was so I guess I was more like 16 17 and this was when social media had gone like full sending like you could send pictures and it wouldn't take an hour to send them and so this was when it was like MSN was quick and like MySpace existed and so this was purely for for boyfriends and so that's why I'm embarrassed so, yeah. so and for myself as well, and to be like, you look good. Yeah, it's not good to take them. Because oh. it's, it's, it's like, 
there's nothing else to it apart from, oh hey, it's me, like, that's it, there's nothing else, it's just you being like, ooh, like, <laughs> so yeah, but, the context is different, isn't it? So yeah. if, if the, the first one, you can describe them as an exploration of your image and see a walk, walk. Which yes. one? The, the green the, one? The, no, the kids one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's literally, there's a medium, there's something yeah. fun to do with it and mm. see the image. Mm -hmm. um, then there's kind of more moody, moody yeah. and thinking about who you are and yeah. what you look like. Yeah. Then clearly, yeah, you're Then it's like, this is what I look like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God. Obviously, that was feeling good, but yeah, it's just new, and that's why I like it, that's why I like I've got all these pictures, because I've got ones that I knew I hated every other one that from that set or whatever, and then ones that I loved it, so you go through all the different emotions when you're taking these pictures, and you can see when you were insecure, when you were secure, like. So, um, just to kind of then um, tra transition to your, um, when it's a portrait or Portrait, in a way, mm -hmm. it's kind of how much is a portrait, or how much is a portrait yeah. for somebody else, um, and become a, a part of your practice. Um, so, do, can you identify a, a place and a time when that happened, and in what form that? Well, when took? it changed. Yeah, when it's it changed from um, portrait or so, you know, uses a portrait. Just that one, like, you mean the difference between it going from just being this private thing to being. These are, the same, oh my goodness. <laughs> these are in the same year as the other one. That's... This? Actually, maybe this was a bit of a change, yeah. This was kind of like, okay, here's my body, sure, that's not going to change. What can I do next? Okay, let's get kooky with some milk and some jam. You know, I'm still young, don't judge me. This is still when I was like 17 at six form. So yeah, then I decided making people go, oh yeah, that looks nice, you know, nice picture of your body is kind of boring after a while. And so it's like, okay, maybe I can make people feel weird make me feel like disgusted. I remember sending these people and then being like, ugh, like I'm just not enjoying looking at them and I was like, I like this. I want to make them feel weird. And so yeah, that was the change. But these were still just private little things that I did. This was not a public thing. So you will share these pictures as you, you did with the previous I think one. I put them in like my sketchbooks at, at six form that we had to put images in. But I wouldn't really think of them as an artwork. There just be something like a reference. Was it, did you feel that um the pictures of your body, mm -hmm. um, clearly they uh, probably had a response by boys, right? So did you then realise that there was something about in, in your hands that you could yeah. use? Yeah, definitely. And, I, and it's weird because now I never do this. Like everyone being been like sending nudes and all this stuff, it's like, when it wasn't a thing, it was fun to do because you'd send it to a guy and he'd be like, wow, like, you have a camera, like no one had digital cameras, so it was like kind of cool. But now everyone on Snapchat is sending pictures of themselves naked, and I'm like, okay, I'm done with that. Like now it's a thing. But, but they don't do it for the same reason, though. Do you see? It? Yeah. I mean, people exchange it to arouse each other. Yeah. I mean, it's basically part of a language. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think people want that language to be a language of confrontation or mm. like you. Yeah, the, the, yeah. No, they want just the simple. They want like, and that's why everyone does the same angle. It's like they want just the the same thing. But yeah, I haven't taken a picture of, like that of myself in like years, like a long time. But yeah, this is the other flip. So what yeah. happened from, so this, when was this made? This was in 2011, while I was in my second year at uni, not knowing what I was doing. I wanted to be a fashion photographer, I wanted to do like, I wanted to basically do what I was doing with myself on models, and so I like pick really like good looking models and be like, yeah, I'm just gonna make the most beautiful picture ever, make her look so seductive. And that was what I was doing, that's all I did. And then I had Esther as a tutor and all of that, and so I jumped into this world of LCC, which was where I studied, and suddenly it was like, that stuff's boring. Everyone was just like, why do you wanna do that? And I did, I did still wanna go with it, because they don't do whatever you want. But I, this was when I was still doing that, but then I would always use myself as another test, like to test out the lights and test out the scenery. And so this was part of the test. So this was me, well this was like, the test was done and then I made it look good, but this began just as me just standing in for someone more beautiful. 
and a phone. But the, yeah. the, the Mika for the styling mm. is not accidental, you weren't just a... No, what, the original idea for the shoe, because I wanted to have like, I don't know if you, do you remember like the Lovatsa campaigns, where they would have like air hostesses being like cute and kooky, and I, that was the kind of way I was going, I wanted to make these girls dress up in different uniforms for different jobs, and have big glasses and have the makeup in the hair, but still look like gorgeous and like Victoria's Secret models. And so I had the costumes, I had all the glasses and everything, but the difference was putting my weird face into it, made it something different and made people laugh. And that's when I was like, okay, I can spook people out, I can turn people on, but now I can make people laugh. And that's when I was like, yes, like, this is what I want to do. In a way, the, 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 all, the three things happen at the same time. And then that's the magic trio. <laughs> that's <laughs> what I like. That's where I like to go, where it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, uh, it's interesting because one would think that um, your practice comes from a kind of long tradition of women using portraits as portraits yeah. as, as a mean to challenge the status quo around relationship or gender and power, etc. Mm -hmm. etc. Et but it sounds like, as you mentioned yeah. earlier, it's more La Chapelle than yeah. Francesca Woodman. Yeah, I, didn't, I, I feel really bad. I didn't know who Francesca Woodman was a couple of years ago. Cindy Sherman, I was like, whatever, because like, we had studied at school, and so I just thought she was boring, but now I love her. But, so yeah, I was really ignorant to everything in the art world, and I loved like David and Chappelle, and like, anything glossy and cool in, in ID magazine. And now I still like, it's nice to look back on that and be like, yeah, yeah, cool, that's nice, but I've moved on. But so there's that glossy influence, but then it's fun now to look into all these, like read about these women that have been doing this, like Cindy Sherman and Francesca Woodman, and be like, oh, like, I get it, what they're doing, and yeah. But, 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 but probably the impulse is the same, isn't it? Yeah, like I read, like, Cindy Sherman has some diaries about, like, just going through all these shoots by herself, and, like, it's that loneliness, not loneliness, but the isolation of it that I really related to. Mm. And it was like, oh, there's other women that have just been doing this, that have just been alone, exploring themselves. How, how much, so, if, if we, if we kind of assume that some of the, uh, um, what, um, the feelings that uh, prompted you to do this, so portraits or, or portraits of this character, and mm. we can discuss the character in a second. Um, like the kind of long tradition of other women have done that before. Mm. I do wonder if the the kind of technological change mm. around subportraiture that we can literally see in your in these images, you know, from the, the snap chat the camera yeah, yeah, to yeah. the Nintendo one and then yeah. You know the digital one and sharing it on, on yeah. MySpace. I wonder how much your practice is also a, 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 a result of that. So mm -hmm. if we assume that they are kind of common ground in terms yeah. of the, you know, the ethos and and, 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 and and things that prompted you to mm. investigate some issues, but I wonder how te the technology has to do with it. it do you, do you yeah, yeah no, exactly, completely. I think it is a result of that, from having them and being like, mm, what else can I do with this? I don't know myself. And I think the weird thing for me at the moment I've been thinking is, since it's become so ubiquitous, since selfies have become so a part of everyone's life, to even the point that now when you update your phone, you have a selfie folder on your phone. And if you look at my phone, my selfie folder is like 10, and like everything else, like I just, do not take them anymore. I used to love it. I used to just spend all my time just taking pictures of myself in whatever mood. I have pictures of me crying, pictures of me feeling happy, like everything. It's just like a great pastime. And now everyone else is loving the pastime, and I'm like, I'm done. Like, I can't be bothered. I hate looking at myself on my iPhone. I'm like, but I was, uh, has that to do with the fact that other people do it, or has to do with that? Uh, growing up? Yeah, maybe I've grown out of it, maybe it's, I think I, I am that kind of person where everyone's doing something I don't want to do it anymore, and like, it's lost the magic of it, like, when you see a selfie of someone now, you're like, oh yeah, that's a nice picture of you, but it's just a selfie to you, the context has changed, you're just not as interested in it. So, so. What, what's your relationship, um, I mean, I'm going to use a term that I'm sure is going to upset people, <laughs> but let, let's talk, you know, let's generally define it, I'm sure that's not the right way to define it, but a lot of, especially young uh, women mm -hmm. that use uh, self portraits uh, online as a tool of, let's call it a kind of feminist tool, and where they, they use their body to propel that, mm -hmm. uh, some of the idea. I mean, I do find personally myself at yeah. that time being quite confused about what idea they oh, really? push in. Tell me more about the confusion. Well, the, the confusion is at, at times uh, this kind of, um, so there's a lot of 
I understand the part that is about this is my body and this is the way that it looks yeah. and fuck you, yeah. do whatever, you know, exactly. deal with it, fine. Yeah. But then there is an element in which there's still a kind of desire to appear canonically beautiful. Yeah. So the way that the camera is, is, is in, in relation to the body, uh, yes, this is my hair mm -hmm. and I'm pissed, but hey, they look quite good. Um, yeah, 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 he has yeah. a bit of blood, but it sits like a crop. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so th that's my concern, but that, that's not what I, um, you know, I don't yeah. know if you want to discuss that. No, I, do, I, I think about that a lot. Like, I think about the way selfies have developed from being flawless to then being like flawless in the Beyonce way, where it's like I've got flaws, but I'm going to celebrate them and being body, body positive and all of that. And like the ones you're describing with armpit hair and everything, but they always do look really cool. And I'm just yeah. like, you look so cool and you look so like, yeah, everyone wants to be your friend. Like, Everything just looks on point and like great, and that's what I can't do when I turn my camera on my phone on myself. But I just I can't be that, yeah, that that fits that formula of like being like yeah I'm big and crazy but I'm cool like I can't be cool. Mm. No. There's a lot of pink as well, but I see that you embrace the pink. <laughs> yeah. <ones. laughs> what if because there's a lot of pink in your yeah, picture as well? Yeah, that's the pink ones. This is old news. Old news. Pink. But this is quite a pastel thing. Yes, I like pastel thing. Okay. Um, but what is the thing about, because again, pink is also a slightly misleading, confusing signal. Because in a way, it, it reinforces gender uh, um, uh, stereotypes mm -hmm. around, around, you know, blue and pink, and yeah. um, the kind of girly, and I'm, I'm this kind of little girl in front of the yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah. So it, it kind of prompt a possible consumption. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure here people have different idea, um, and, and it will be here, nice to hear in a second. Mm -hmm. I, I just wonder if you can explain it to me. What, what, why pink, and what's pink for you? Um, why you decided to use it? I don't think I ever decided. I always loved pink. Like I loved it. like when I was in school, I would dress in like I had like a Powerpuff Girls backpack and shit. Like it was just I liked it, and then. It na I naturally was drawn to it with my images, and then everyone was like, wow, like, on the internet people love it because it's so like Tumblr and like, yeah, pastel colours. And so I was like, right, I need to read into this, I need to actually research what I'm attracted to. And so I read a book just called Pink, it's a great book if you want to learn how to colour pink. And um, it's just great because it's the only colour that embarrasses people, and that is just so great to have a colour that makes people feel embarrassed. Like when a man wears pink and they're like, oh, God, and my girl's colour. Like, it's just great that there's a colour that can make people feel like that. And then I also found out that it's the most draining colour to look at because apparently it's like some football teams paint the opposition's changing room pink because they're like so tired by the end of looking at it. And then, yeah, like you said, it's on the one hand, it's innocent and flirty and little girls and cute toys, but then it's also very sexual. It's the colour of genitalia and it's it's kind of like very flirtatious, like red signifies love, but pink signifies kind of like longing and desire and flirtation, and I love that in between. Like red, I hate the color red, but pink is like, yeah, it's so many things. Mm -hmm. uh, and wh where is the green coming in? It's the opposite of pink. That's literally why I do it. I don't know if it's on here. Oh. You have to play the video again. Oh, no, it's there. Yeah. There yeah, when I was on the way to the hotel, like I had a week before I was maybe, maybe, maybe like, let's, let's hold back. No, no, it's not hold back, <laughs> but let's give the all the full story. Okay, so how did it. this project come about? Okay, so I had a picture on my computer just from like Googling everything, like saving all the pictures to your laptop. And I had this one of this bathroom and it was like a trip advisor picture. And it was just put in that folder of like dream pictures, like wow. Like, and then one day I was like, it had been like basically a year since I've made any work and I was just so frustrated with it. And um, I did that thing where you get the picture and you drop it back into Google and it tells you where it's from. And so I dropped the picture in and it was in Pennsylvania in this honeymoon hotel that had been going since the 60s. And I was like, oh, oh like I can't afford to go there. <laughs> like, that's not gonna happen. So. And, but then, you know, what people say about making work is that the difference between not making work and making work is when you're just so frustrated, you just had enough of not making work that it's like, okay, fuck it, like, let's just, let's do it. And so I raised the money, I like sold loads of stuff on eBay, and I just, it was quite quick, within like two weeks I booked the ticket, and I was like, what am I doing? Like, this is so mad, this is so stupid, I'm so young, I'm not talented, I don't know what I'm doing, why am I wasting my money going all the way there? I'm not going to make anything good. 
they're gonna think I'm weird. It was I had so many like up until I got in, my key in the door to the hotel, I just felt so wrong about it. And then I stayed there for a week and I basically didn't leave my room apart from the free breakfast and free dinner. And I just went back into my room and took pictures all day and all night. And this was kind of like the last thing I did and yeah, it was just an idea I had on the way there. I was thinking like watching I never plan any of the images, I just pack everything for anything to happen. And so I thought well, when you say you pack stuff, what do you pack? It's ridiculous. Like I never use any like of it. Like wigs or loads of wigs. For this one I packed like as if I was going on my honeymoon, so I packed I had like two wedding dresses, I had so much like wedding lingerie. Oh, what do you want two wedding dresses? <laughs> Who knows? People let and my best friend is a question. <coughs> Anyway, so I packed all this stuff, and then at the last minute I was like, oh yeah, I've like always had this idea of wanting to do something with like a mint green woman, so I think it's quite common in like, I don't know, there's been a few sci-fi. characters, yeah, sci-fi, like this minty like goddess, and so I had this idea, and then I was like, oh, it'd be perfect for this, because it's pink, pink, green, like that's what you learn at school, opposite colours, attract, blah, 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 and so I went and bought the paint, and I was really pissed off, because I got the wrong shade of green, and, but I ended up photoshopping it, so yeah. So, what, what attracted to you in the first place uh, when you saw a picture? So it was a picture of the bathroom? Yeah, just all the mirrors, like with some guy, like, <laughs> tripping by the guy, taking a picture, and I was like, okay, it's pink, it's heart-shaped, yes, and then I was like, mirrors, photography, like, photography loves mirrors, guy bored out or whatever, like, you can't go wrong with some mirrors in a picture. Right. And this is a picture that we were discussing earlier, and possibly going to a restaurant. Yes. And that's where I start thinking about People. your feeling. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you ever, and maybe the first, uh, so we can backtrack for a yeah. second. So do you, when you start then using yourself in the picture, so maybe the first question is, what happened when you use your body mm. and you realize that there was this reaction, there was a mix of um, embarrassment, yeah. Love, but also mm-hmm. attraction. Yeah. So then, what was the next step? You thought, oh, well, after sort of the LCC. Out the world. No, no, the yeah. LCC. So uh, we go back to those yeah. pictures, yeah. and we and something has happened with that mm-hmm. as a portrait. So mm-hmm. what happened after that? Yeah. Well, like, why did I stop taking? No, you. you I'm, I'm talking about those. Yeah, pictures. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you done those? Oh, what happened in between? Like yeah. What? Well, then oh, because they all have colours on. What, these ones? No, sorry, I'm going to I'm going to question it. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm jumping. So okay. Pull off my jump. Tell me so what you want to I'm going mm-hmm. back to the time at LCC. Yes. So you were second year. Yes. Um, wanted to do uh, fashion pictures. Yes. Um, kind of semi accidentally use your body mm-hmm. and realize there was something interesting yes. about that. So then, what happened from After there? That. Yes. Okay, so I graduated. And, and this is I, the picture from? That was my graduation picture, that was it. And then suddenly all this attention started rolling in because I was only doing it because it was more of a reaction against what everyone else was doing at school. Like, I felt like at uni, like everyone's having so much fun outside of lessons. And then you go into the crit, and I was like, here's this back of my picture, something really sad. And you're just like, what? Like, where's all the fun gone? Like, why is no one having fun anymore? And like, so everyone was doing all this kind of like serious, serious photography. And I was just like, fuck it, like I want to jump out of a cake and make people laugh. And I got addicted to like the attention from my classmates and just from, just every week having to bring something in and being like, look, ah, like that's what I've done now. And so that was exciting for me. So it was all into it, it was all just at uni, like just showing up. And then suddenly I did a degree show and people were like, hey, that's really commenting on women. And I was like, wow. Like, and can we interview you? And I was like, oh. And then suddenly it became a public <laughs> And then it just rolled on and on, and all the attention came, and I was like, oh, okay, I've got to really like, be serious about this joke that I'm doing. <laughs> is this a long joke? It's a very long joke. <laughs> how, how, long, how long is it going to be? Four years, it's been. <laughs> so yeah, but now I'm very serious about it. You know? I'm very, yeah. I don't like that as a good thing or a bad thing. No, I'm serious about it, but I'm still trying to keep like the initial comedy of it. But, but did you think that the, 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 the seriousness has nothing to do with how funny or not funny it no, is? but just how the extremes I'm willing to go to make a better picture than the last one. Like, going to that honeymoon hotel, like, I am so anxious. Like, I can't deal with, like, going to a hotel and speaking to these people, like, it's very stressful. And so I, to, I'm very serious about pushing myself to doing something that I feel really uncomfortable with. 
the site of my career picture. But, uh, but could you feel that like a lot of it comes from, you know, I don't know if instinct is the right term. Yeah. But instead of, because I think a lot of time what students do, they mm -hmm. read about the Yeah. they start thinking, yeah, yeah. I really like what she does. I understand and I relate to some of the things that she was going through at that time. Mm -hmm. And you start mimicking. Yeah. Why it looks to me or sounds to me that that isn't quite the process. <laughs> like I was so embarrassed all the way through uni, everyone was like, hey, you should check, have you seen this, have you seen that, blah, blah, blah. Everyone having names like flying out of their mouths and I was just like, who? Like, and it got me into a lot of trouble because it, it, I felt stupid and I felt like I wasn't part of this movie <coughs> art world. But then it's now it's trickled in and I've learned about it, but I feel good to have that naive thing, mm -hmm. even though I hate people that say that. Like, oh, so when people start talking about those, um, uh, supporters as uh, comments on um, mm -hmm. female body. I don't know what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying. So, w w what was your what was your response? What did you think? Uh, I was glad because I wasn't. That was the one subject that I was clued up on. Like, I loved reading about like women studies, gender, blah blah blah. Like, I loved that. Um, so I was like, great. I get to talk about stuff I care about, and I get to vent about things I'm angry about. And it was a really good outlet for that. Like, people weren't just asking me about technical things, they were asking me emotional things, and I really didn't like that. And so, I was, yeah, I was happy to have that response. And, and what, what do you feel people relate to in, in the character? Yeah, that's what, that was the really nice surprise, that a lot of women and men as well, like everyone was just like, they just love how kind of disappointed she is. And I think that's a feeling that I love, like I love just that kind of really lonely feeling where you're like, you've really got your hopes up about something and then it doesn't happen, and you're like, so silently sad, and it's like I just love making myself laugh from those really sad moments of just being lonely and bored and exhausted and tired and disappointed in yourself and in everything in your life. And like, that's what, what, what do you like about that? <laughs> I, I understand why yeah. people relate to it. Yeah, I guess I've just always liked dark comedy like that, like that kind of comedy where it's, it's quite British as well to be taking the piss out of something that made you feel so shit. Mm. You thought you have to. I love that. And it's also I like to tap into feelings that people don't make public. So people might make public feelings about oh I'm pissed off I didn't get this job and blah blah blah. But then when they go home they have some real deep feelings and like they're sat there crying and shit. And I just love that. I love what people do when they're truly just by themselves. They're not in the public anymore. They're just sat at home being like oh my life. And then that's what I do in my picture. And so, so going to the honeymoon hotel was putting yourself in that spot. Yeah. Or well, at least in the well, surrounding. I think it was what it was, I've been doing all this stuff alone and I've just used bedrooms that I found on Airbnb or like my grandma's bedroom. And then this was kind of more taking a different route where I was going into people who aren't alone, people who are forever together, going on their honeymoon, <coughs> eternal love and getting ready to live their life with someone and that's just something I can't even like fathom. So it's like let me put myself in that place alone. Like, what's the funniest place you could go alone? A honeymoon hotel. Great. How was it? Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> it was so strange. It was everything I wanted and more. It How was, was the just breakfast? delicious. Like every morning, French toast, bacon, like butter, syrup. And they don't blink an eyelid. Like the staff are just like, hey, yeah, blah blah blah. And like you're like, this isn't weird. And they don't care. They act so normal. And I love that. Yeah, they've probably seen quite a few strange stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I told them I was a writer. I was like, I'm a travel blogger. And, uh, like, and so that kind of threw them off enough. But then they started following me on Twitter. Yeah. So they know. <laughs> they did. Someone, some like, magazine posted the image and they were like, you recognise that bathroom? <laughs> and that was it. And I was like, yeah, thanks. Thank you so much for having me. Ha -ha. Like, and they haven't responded. So I think they're cool. Everyone there was pretty much like, I hate my job. <laughs> so did, did, they, did they know that you were green or? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Apart from I finished doing that shoot and I was so proud of myself. I was like, I have taken the picture of the year. This is great. And then I was like in the shower washing it all off. It was just like body paint come off, great. And then I looked in the bath and I was like, oh, it's a bit, bit of like there's like my handprints and my footprints all over. And I was like, oh, let me just scrub it off. Not coming off, like it did not come off. Like you know, in an old bath has like enamel that just soaks things up, and I was like crying 
on my hands and knees with like excoriating gloves on my hands and flannels on my knees, just like rubbing it and rubbing it, like <laughs> squeaking up the bath, like sounding like I was having sex, and it was just like I actually cried quite a lot when that happened. It was really This sad. isn't the thing bathtub. Yeah, I was in that bath crying. <laughs> it was a really horrible experience. Because imagine the deposit, imagine the money they charge you, like why are you, and then imagine what the reason would be, like it was crazy. And then heart shaped heart. Yeah, I mean they probably seem expensive. weird shit, but that is just like unnecessary to them, like they don't need that in their life. <laughs> so, but I got it off in the end, so yeah. Um, maybe the last question for me, yeah. and then we can, there's a, um, a lot of people here, so I'm sure there are a lot of questions. But um, I was wondering, because um, I think somebody told me this, I don't even know if it's yeah. true, but Joyce, which is the name of a character, yes. is actually something that was not forced on you, but it wasn't something that you set up. Yeah, So exactly. do you want to explain exactly? Yeah, it was um, the day we had to hand in our work in our third year, and you need a title for your project. I would just call it Final Major Project. And so I was thinking of a title for it, and everyone was like, oh, why don't you just do it as her name? And then I was just like, oh, okay, I'll do a name. And then I took the name from a character in Edward Scissorhands, the one with big red hair, with the little nails, who like, tries to seduce him. So I just used that as a name, I was like, okay, Joyce. And then people just went crazy, they loved it. Every time I would talk about Joyce, they'd just get really into the idea of it, the character of it. And it was kind of useful for me, because it helped carry the project and put it all together. But now, I hate it. Like, I just, I just well, I don't hate it, but it's just, people always want to know, like, hey, What's she up to? Like, how's Joyce? <laughs> I'm like, it's not real. It's just, <laughs> and they want it to be this kooky, like, alter ego. It's not an alter ego. Like, it's just me doing stuff. And so they want it to be something that it isn't. And it's fine, let them do that. Like, if people are giving you publicity, let them do whatever they want. Um, but I am trying to detach myself from it. In a but, way. But how do you detach yeah. yourself? I don't know. I'm not, like, I'm not like Ziggy Stardust. I'm not going to be like, it's under, like, the death of Joyce. Like, it's just going to, I'm just going to carry on making work and not use the name as much. If they want to say it, they can say it. But, but I'm not what did you, do, do you find that the idea of Joyce kind of just not interesting or overwhelming to have to this other persona to Yeah, I think it limits it. I think it limits the project because they're like, what's Joyce doing next? And like, who else is going to appear in the picture? She have a husband? Like, does she have a boyfriend? And it just reduces it down to this narrative. And there's no narrative. It's just like, I'm just doing whatever. Mm. So really like... But, so the, the, but does, does the, the, not Joyce, but yeah. does the uh, persona in the pictures? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not me. I know, it's, it's not you, else. but you're saying that it's you. I just I've got like... a new phrase that I use. Okay, okay go for it. She's a fictional character without a story. Oh, well. That's, <laughs> that's <laughs> the new phrase. That's what I say now. And it is. It's not me. It's a very exaggerated version of me. It's some. It's just like a, a hallucination. Like right? it's just a a person, a made up person. Yeah, I was just thinking yeah. that. You know, both in literature and in photography, or there's a kind of long tradition of people using a, you know, a, a, either a pseudonym to, yeah. to be to exist as a writer, or, or create a character that's quite close to yeah. your own self, but yeah. it does things that maybe you can't do, yeah. or don't want to do, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. But you don't see that really as as a as a key to no. to look at the work. No, I'm not like dramatically different from what I'm displaying. Like, all these stupid poses I'm doing right now in this video, like, that was me, I was loving what I was seeing, I was having a good time. And so it's not like I'm like some shy person, like finally I'm Joyce, like I'm free to be myself, <laughs> like I'm fine, but it's more that in my day to day life, I don't like dressing up, I'm not that, like, I'm quite plain and I just like to get on with things, and so I feel like I save it all up for this one moment to be like, boom, like, this is it, full extravagance, like a drag queen. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we're doing, we're doing good. Yeah. yeah. Should we open to the floor? Um, comments, questions, remarks. Why don't you talk about it? I mean, I, I love the, the, the film of Lucy Free. And in, recently in Paris, and during the film symposium, there's a lot of discussion about the relationship of fashion to so-called fine art people. And there are quite a few really interesting photographers like Anna Gordon and many others. 
were working in the big fashion house at this paradise, I think. Um, the commission, by the way. Yes, the commission. Yeah. And I think that relationship is changing in a way that's very much more sophisticated. And I'm really interested to hear you say mm -hmm. that you've come out of fashion photography, yeah. which makes a huge amount of sense to you, seeing see the work. Yeah. And I wonder if that's something that you might actually, in a strange way, move back towards. Or I think, yeah, because the weird thing is I was never, I never practiced being a fashion photographer. It was just while I was a student, like a thing I was interested in. And then since I've graduated, having this style of work, I've had a lot of people contacting me. But then I think at this age, they, they're like, oh, can you do a lookbook for free? And you're like, no. Like, and so you get really bad. You, I think I'm at the stage now where I'm not getting the kind of commissions that I would want. And, I'm, and because I've never practiced being a fashion photographer, I'm still kind of scared of it. I'm like, could I handle like, models and stylists? And that's the whole thing I'm backed away from. But this is so, interesting to hear men talk about the relationship working with the artists. Yeah. And it's really not about sort of putting themselves into the work. Exactly. It's about them really wanting. Yeah. I think that's the kind of thing I'm going to literally have to wait 10 years for because it's like, right now, if I said, no, I don't want a stylist, I don't want this, I don't want anything, I want it my way, they'd be like, go away, like you're annoying. And so I think in 10 years, like Cindy Sherman does like, little fashion commissions where she's the model, she, does, she calls all the shots. And so I think, yeah, you just have to wait till you have that respect. But even then, I don't even know if it's something I want to do, because, I don't know, do I need to? I don't know. I mean, a lot of time, uh, what fashion wants is the aesthetics of things. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want the uh, politics involved in a piece or the... Uh, so, you know, I'm sure there's, there's been some advertising agents that look at this and yeah. say, we can we ever be all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel like someone said to me that you can be, like, you can either go into fashion and have a two-year career as a photographer that's just, like, amazing, like, you're this darling of the fashion world, or you can just leave that all behind, stick this fine art, and you'll have a 20 year career that will be much you know, more enriching, I guess. Because the fashion world will love you, every brand will lose you, and then they'll be like, well, we can't use her anymore because she's done. And I don't want to have that kind of shelf life. So, yeah. I think at the beginning, you were saying how the self is as well, so it's something to prove mm. um, from when you were younger. Do you feel like with this you gained a much deeper confidence than the others or what is there anything that you're trying to prove just yourself like minus the audience and the viewers yeah. is there anything that you're trying to extract from yourself from doing this performance yeah i think the main thing i feel like i'm trying to prove is that i'm a good photographer because i don't think of myself as a good photographer like i'm not naturally into it as a thing like i just it's very much trial and error and so the main thing i'm trying to do is prove that i'm good at what I do and then yeah also that I'm a good kind of performer mm -hmm. and yeah I think like, the reason I must have stopped taking all the kind of like phone selfies is because I have these I'm like well I have some of this like this is much better and so um, yeah it's kind of replaced it and it's yeah it's given me much more confidence than just like a picture that everyone else has so yeah. But then, does he have also um I mean, I don't want to be corny. Go on, be corny. <laughs> I just feel, does he actually do something for your life? Apart from, let's, let's forget about the, you know, the, the kind of... I'll tell you exactly what it did for my life. I, I was thinking on the way here, we had to talk about, and I was thinking, <laughs> when I was on Tinder, when, in the past, um, <laughs> they Are you had worried that people are going to go, oh, no, right I now, just, I, I, no, 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 I'm just, you know, I'm telling the truth. I'm not on it anymore. Anyway. When I was on Tinder, What's wrong with Tinder? No, well, you yeah. know, I'm, like, I'm done. I'm done. Anyway, when I was on Tinder, they let you link your Instagram to it recently on the update because I went back to it and I was like, oh. and I was like, let me try that out. And I linked my Instagram, which has this and everything else, and let me tell you, that's the trick. Like that was it. It had I, I had to I had to delete it. It was kind of wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I thought, okay, that's kind of cool. Like people can, because when when you don't have that, like, it's just your face, like you're looking pretty. Nah. Then people are just like, hey, random girl. But then there's somebody like, what the fuck are you? And then it's like you have something else. And so I feel like since. So what kind of people yeah, will be going wild? Everyone, even like bodybuilders, were like, I'm quite intrigued by you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can hear it. So yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, it's 
it's interesting to see what the like heterosexual male public thought of the stuff, and they were like, "What does this mean? What is this?" Yeah, okay. So maybe this is a good. Um, yeah. Meaning. So what, what do you think? You know, well, this is a general question, but yeah. what do you think men think about this work? Because that's what, what I was thinking. The green one, I think, is sexually yeah, the green, charged. Yeah. The green one. And this like, what video yeah. generally is. Yeah, 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 yeah. But with the other, when I first did the early work, which was more kind of like confrontational and me looking like purposefully unattractive and kind of like attractive but weird, like, and um, yeah, I had. It was weird. I didn't have guys tell. Well, actually, no, I did. I did have some guys telling me, being like, "Oh, I feel like I'm confused by her. Like, should I be turned on by her or not?" And it's like. Really, is that a question you ask? Like, it's so dumb. Anyway, but yeah, so they would be like, I'm confused, and then, or like they'd be scared or intimidated by it, but I don't know what they think. Yeah, and you don't mind, and you don't mind whatever they think? Um, I don't like it when they do say like, oh, I know I'm not supposed to find her attractive, but I do. And it's crazy because I'm different. I think they're like being different for being like, hey, like this is cookie. This is cookie, but I like it. It's like I don't give a fuck what you like. Like like whatever you like. They think they're being like different by liking it. But do you feel that you have more concerns about what women think about your work than more men does, or you also don't care about mm. what women read about your work? No, I think I'm thinking of women more. A hundred percent. I'm definitely not thinking about like. Who am I going to get for making this decision? Yeah, I think about women a lot when I'm doing it. Like when I was in that bar, I was thinking, what other women have been in this bar? Like that's, yeah, I'm thinking of the shared feelings. But no, it's more, I'm thinking, what is the art world going to think of this? Like now it's something, my whole head has just changed to career. It's all just like, oh, because I want success, you know? <laughs> Come on. Like, when I'm doing this, I'm thinking, is this technically good? Is this good? Is this okay? Like, will the moment like this? Like, what's good? Like, I'm just, yeah, my head is on in the gallery now. Oh, wow. I know, it's a bad, a bit sad, you know. And the internet, you know, like, what, what, what impact will this have? So, yeah. So, for example, what impact that this video had? Do you, can you, how can you measure that? And mm. there is a need to. How can I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. People share yeah. it, people comment. Yeah, the comments have been funny. Yeah, but I don't know. People have people have like the main thing I was scared about this video wasn't my body. It was, it's kind. Of, is it boring? Like, is the edit okay? Because I mean, work, I work a lot as well with films, and I do like I work as an art director for like short films and music videos. So I've been around directors and cameramen, and if they saw this, they'd be like, "What are you doing? Like, this is so." basic, like what I'm doing and the angles and whatever, but it's all I can do because I'm by myself and so I'm technical is first I think and then I'm like, I don't know, pick up people. There is something really interesting, um, I'm, I'm an actor yeah. from Spain, I actually met you and it's, um, I, I got in touch with your work thanks yeah. to another actor in Spain through Instagram yeah. Yeah. and it was very fascinating I mean, because I, I started asking myself what is the process of creation of these, for me it wasn't just one character, it was many characters in each uh, photo, or how you, how does she get to, get to that place where she wants to get? Yeah. And this video is really revealing that way, because it, um, it shows you just looking for that, yeah. I don't know, instance, exactly. or moment. Exactly. And I find it really, really, really fascinating, uh, Thank you. because, um, I mean, it's not only you just doing stupid yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff, it's just you looking for your work. No, I'm glad you picked up on that because I forget as well with this video what I do before taking a still image. Because video is kind of like my little side thing, like, like I'll make videos. Because I've got, when you have the 5D, you can take a picture, bang, you can take a video, so it's like, it makes sense. So what I do, the process is to film myself for ages doing this, and then I'm like, I watch it back and I'm like, okay, that's a good angle go back and take that picture. And so these are kind of like the <laughs> supplements to the picture. And so yeah, I am looking for the angle. In a way. I mean, yeah. just... I'm like which, trying it all out, try every pose, and then go back and watch it and be like, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. It's the way of looking for a character. Yeah. That's my yeah. Thing. Yeah. Another thing, what is with the sausages? The what? The sausages? <laughs> oh, they're not mine. They're oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but they could be. <laughs> they could be. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that from it's, it's someone the... else? Yeah, it's called after. Oh, I've been there for a week. I've been here. But yeah, but, I think I've been there. That made me think more. And then I let you. Um, I just you, you wouldn't consider 
setting up having somebody else taking the picture. I mean, how, oh, how important else take the picture. Yeah, how, <laughs> how important it is that you are there by yourself and it's a self-portrait or portrait that you do rather than... Because yeah. you could have, you know, I you know have somebody else. to do the portrait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not about me being like, I must be the one that took the picture. Like, I really don't care. I'm, I would happily have someone else take it, but it's just that the process is so boring. I just couldn't put someone through that. And it's like, it's like asking someone to help you take selfies. You would be like, hey, do I come to my room and like, help out? Like, because you don't know what you're doing, there's no plan. And so I'll start a shoot in the evening and I'll finish five in the morning and I'll sit around in between takes, like just eating crisps and like feeling weird. And like, it's such a like personal thing that I couldn't ask someone to be there. Like people act, like people, I get emails being like, can I assist you? And I think they'd be enthusiastic for like two hours and then they'd be like, I mean, but surely it's not just about that. It's about that you you have to be there by yourself. Yeah, because if there's someone else, you start acting differently. It's like whenever someone else is in the room, you act in a completely different way. Especially me, like I just feel like I'm always trying to like make sure they're happy, okay, I can smile, I'm not bored. Like I want to entertain them. And then if there's no one there for me to entertain, then I can just do the work. Um, I I wanted to know your personal opinion is on these. Characters that you take on, mm. uh, the ones in the back, and um, what, what do you think of those people that go and doll themselves up to mm. that extreme, or are in a way so um, like so into that, yeah, yeah. into their, their presentation? I guess. Yeah, yeah, they're into it, but mm. they're into uh, presentation, but also I feel like they enjoy mm. um, there's this comical kind of like meme of women yeah. that they are trying to present themselves as a persona but they're just a shell. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I didn't know if like you were looking at, at it as the same way as mm -hmm. like making it blatantly obvious that these people are memes or mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So, no, I think what I've always tried to say from the start that this isn't a critique, that this isn't me looking down on people and saying and making a comment on it. It's pure. It is definitely from experience. Like today, like I'll put on makeup and I'll dress up and I love the whole experience of presenting myself like that. But then in my spare time, I won't. But then when I was younger, when I was a teenager, it was all consuming. It was everything. Like I needed two hours to get ready for a night out. I had hair extensions, nails, fake tan done like three nights in a row before the night out. It was a military operation. It was, and that was when I didn't see the irony or the fun or like the meme in it. I didn't see the comedy in it. It was just like I have to be perfect. I have to look the most perfect I can be on this night out. But it doesn't mean anything ever again. And so. Yeah, so now I've got, I've got a bit older, I'm a bit more detached from it, and like everyone says, as a woman, when you get older, you care less, and so that's definitely something I can say that happens, but yeah, it's not a critique on them, it's, it is, yeah, autobiographical, and, but it is exaggerated, yeah, it has to be, it's, yeah, it's emphasized, so yeah, you're welcome. Any questions? Just, yeah. yes. Bringing to us something like that, People now are looking to, to work and bring like, like a message behind it, and it, it's funny that you quote them in a way that whenever we are not from it, mm -hmm. which is cool. But do you think that these images, the, the latest work, where mm -hmm. the, the so called fictional character yeah. without the story, yeah. um, if the body wasn't as good looking and hot and sensual, and sensual receives and the interest would be so uh, mm. so much as it is now. Yeah, this is the thing I think about a lot because what I present is like this much of what I've actually shot when I'm there. I've got pictures, I've got folders and folders of images that I've taken where I look terrible. Like I hate how I look. I can't even bring myself to look at these pictures while I'm trying to find the good ones. And so I am presenting the best version of me, but, and I do sometimes wish, like, kind of be one of those photographers that shows the flaws and emphasize, and shows the rolls and the hair and, like, all the imperfections. I kind of, sometimes I do wish I could be part of that club where they're like, hey, look at all this stuff, like, acne and hair and all this. I do want to do that, 
but then I just, there is a part of me that just is drawn to perfection and making it look good, but then hoping that something, there's a, still something that makes people feel weird. It's not just good, it's like good, but she's sad, and that's weird. Like, there's an emotion in it that's flawed, so, yeah. I don't know, it's, I try to mix it up, like, have one good picture and one ugly one, like, I don't know, try and keep it real. No more questions. Um, so the time for me to thank you. Thank you. And uh, um, tomorrow we don't have a talk, but we have one on Friday at uh, four o'clock, and it's going to be Max Pinkers and Alex Well talking about our fiction and documentary. Um, thank you. Thank you very much.